looking at here is a comparison of, based on how fast you're going, brake lights come on in front of you, how long does it take your brain to even register that, hey, I better stop? Okay, how far will your car travel in the amount of time that it takes me to think, make that thought process? And your car is going to travel farther, obviously, the faster you're going. Okay, so what this is saying, if you're traveling 60 miles an hour, you're going to travel 60 feet before your brain even registers that you need to stop. Okay? And then braking distance is from that moment when you realize, oh, I better stop, I'm going to hit the brake, how far will your car travel before it comes to a complete stop? So that total stopping distance down there at the bottom, that's a combination of the thinking distance and the braking distance. Okay? Really don't need to know, understand why those formulas are the way they are to be able to do this, but this is just sort of what we're using as our example. So let's talk about what I mean by function notation. Okay? Function notation looks like this. F and then X in parentheses. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Good. Okay. This is red. F. <laughs> of x. There is a question in your homework that literally asks, how is that red? I just gave you the answer. Okay? f of x. This does not mean multiplication. Not multiplication. Um, I have a lot of people who have just been trained to think that parentheses mean multiplication every single time. Okay? Um, this is not multiplication. This is talking about like naming a function. It is a symbol. It is a mathematical symbol. When you see something like this, notice how the 5 is in the x spot. What that's really saying is plug this 5 in for x in the equation. Okay, so that's telling you plug this into whatever the equation says. Okay. So, for example, and I'm going to slide this down a little bit so I can see my table at the same time, but if you want to take a quick second and just jot down this example one, okay, these three pieces for example one, give you a second to write those down and then we'll talk through them. And I guess I'm jumping ahead of myself a little. Before we hit example one, I'm going to take up here in the table, and my thinking distance I'm going to call that t of x. My breaking distance I'm going to call b of x, because I'm not creative at all. And my stopping distance I'm going to call s of x. Okay, so I'm just naming those functions. Okay, so when I say t of something, I'm talking about thinking distance. When I say b of something, I'm talking about breaking distance. So when I say evaluate S of 40, what am I really asking? I'm asking for the stopping distance at 40 miles an hour, right? What's the stopping distance at 40 miles an hour? Now, if you've got this nice table in front of you, you should just be able to find it on your table, right? So I'm at stopping distance, 40 miles an hour, answer would be 120 feet. I should have put in there. Oh, I did. That these are all measured in feet. So that one came right from the table. Anyone see something else I could have done? If I was, let's say, too lazy to use the table. Although this other way I think is harder. Tessa? Okay. In that S s of x equation, right? I could have looked at this equation and plugged in 40. If I had done that, this is, this is, the, answer. This is the answer I would have gotten. Okay? So let's look at b of 35. What's that asking you for? Breaking distance when you're going? Okay, now what's the problem with that? Not in the table. Okay? But it's okay. 
because I know what b of x is equal to, I know where these numbers are coming from, all I have to do is plug that 35 into that formula. Okay, so I'm going to say it would be 35 squared over 20, and I'm going to need calculator help here. Okay. And what I would ask yourself in a situation like this is does that kind of jive with what's already in the table? So for braking distance, okay, 35 miles an hour, that's going to be somewhere between 30 and 40, right? Does that number make sense with what we see here and here? Yeah. If you went somewhere in between, now it's not going to be exactly in between because this isn't a linear function. We'll talk more about that when we talk variation, but... Um, if it's somewhere in between, if it seems reasonable, then you're okay. All right, now can anyone tell me what this third question is asking? For what value of x is b of x equal to 180? Logan? They have to find how fast everything is. Okay. Perfect. So I want to know, I want my breaking distance to be equal to 180, and I want to know the value of x, which is talking about the speed. Okay, Hunter? How'd you get that? Perfect. You got it. So if I look at breaking distance, and I'm looking at breaking distance because it's B of X, I want to look for where the answer is 180, which is right here, and then I want to give the speed that I would be going. So that's 60 miles an hour. Does that make sense how to use that information? So really the lesson today is how to use this notation, okay? Let's look at example two, and then we are done. You want to take a second, maybe write down example two before we get started? So what's this first thing asking me to do, where it says f of 3? Mm -hmm. Yep, go to this equation up here, because that's my f of x, plug in 3 for x. So I'm going to say 4 times 3 minus 3 divided by 3 squared. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, minus 3 is 9, and 9 over 9 is equal to 1. So what this means in terms of a function is that 3 is matched up with 1, okay? If I was to write it this way, 3 is paired up with 1. This is your, a piece of your domain. This is a piece of your range. You could also write it as an ordered pair, 3 comma 1. So this next one is asking me to put in negative 1. Okay, and after you write this one down, I want everyone to try to calculate this, and I want to see what answers we get. Tanner? I think maybe you missed that this was a negative 4. Like 4 times negative 1, negative 4. Oh. What else we got, Jesse? Negative 13. Mm, I don't think negative 13 is right either, Hunter. Negative 1. Mm. All right, maybe we should run through this together. Logan? Seven. Okay, 7. You're really close. Evan? Negative seven. Okay, let's talk through this. 
Um, and I'm trying to think about some of those other answers I got, where I may have gotten them from. Let me, uh, let me play. Okay. First of all, what I was really expecting to get was 7 and negative 7. I was expecting those to be my two answers we were arguing over. Okay? So let me talk about that for a minute, and then I want to see if I can figure out what happened with some of those others. Um, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So I get negative 7 on top. What's the bottom equal to? 1. one okay? Positive 1, right? Yes. All right. So this is negative 7 over positive 1, so I get negative 7. Here's the issue. And this is, this is important enough for me to stand up, okay? If you walk out of my class on the last day of school and I've only taught you one thing, first of all, that would be a sad day for me, but if you walk out of here with one thing in your mind, this is what I want it to be. In your calculator, if you are taking a negative number and raising it to a power, it must, must, must be in parentheses, okay? And we're going to talk, when we talk about powers and exponents, we'll talk about why that is. But anytime you're doing a negative number raised to a power, it must be in parentheses. Easy thing to forget, okay? But if you don't, that negative 1 squared is going to come out to be a negative 1 in your calculator, which is not correct, and that's where a positive 7 would have come from because you would have done negative 7 over negative 1. Okay, Hunter? I did all day because I did Okay, let's take a look at that because I want to see. I think I know what happened there. Um, all right, let me try typing it in like this. This, by the way, is not necessarily correct, but. Okay. Hmm. Hunter, let me maybe just kind of look at how it's typed in on yours because I was looking for where. Oh, I see, up at the top. Okay, your calculator somehow, that parentheses is like correcting back here for order of operations, whereas here I think what's happening is it's running through this whole division and then squaring at the end. So I think that's the issue. Um, the other thing I can warn you about calculators, these kinds of calculators, is they do do a good job with order of operations, but when you've got these fractions like this, you've got to know that sort of your order of operations is being changed up a little bit. When, when I write a problem like this, I'm telling you, do all of the stuff on the top, all of the stuff on the bottom, and then when you've got one number on top and one number on bottom, you divide. Calculators get a little mixed up with that. Okay, now for some reason, when I type it in like this, which is how Hunter did it the second time through and it worked, it seems to be okay. But if you left those parentheses off the negative one, that gave you a wrong answer. So in a problem with a big fraction like this, sometimes I find it easier to just do the top and the bottom separately and then divide. So I might do 4 times negative 1 minus 3, get an answer there, okay, and then say divided by negative 1, and of course I'm going to remember to put that in parentheses because Mrs. Terrigno threatened me, um, and then I get my answer, okay. So, so with those fraction ones, might be better for you to do the top and the bottom separate and then divide. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm betting that's where some of our wrong answers came from was just how, how you're typing it into the calculator. Okay. This next one, f of n, what is that asking you to do? Put n in. Put n in. Really, you're just switching the x's out for n's. So you're going to say 4n minus 3 over, whoops, n squared. Now, is there anything I can do with that? Nope. I don't know why they would ever really ask you to do that. It's really just getting you used to, like, what does that notation mean? It means swap it out. Okay? And then with this one, same thing, I'm going to put that 3k in place of x. But this one, I am going to be able to simplify a little bit. Hmm. Good thought. I can see why you would think that. Nope. It literally means 3k. And then this would be 3k squared. Notice I put this one in parentheses even though it's not negative. 
Um, I did that just to make sure that I was squaring this whole thing, okay? Because if you just write 3k squared, it's going to look like just the k is being squared. Now this one I can simplify. How could I simplify that top? Logan, go ahead. Okay, so that would become 12k minus 3. What would the bottom turn into? 9k squared. The k still gets squared. So this means square the 3 and square the k. Okay? Now, I would be totally fine if you left it like this. Okay? I had a smarty pants in my second hour say, hey, all of those are divisible by 3, so could we go through and divide them all by 3? Sure, you could. Um, that's something we're going to hit harder when we talk like factoring, which is later in the year. So right now I don't expect you to be able to do that, but if you do think of it, you can do that too. Okay, but really for right now I'd be totally happy with your answer like that. Okay, so really big thing I want you to take away today is do you know what this means? Whoops, you can't see that. Do you know what this means? Okay, do you know what that means to do? That's really the whole purpose of today's lesson. You got it? You feel good about it? Awesome. Okay. Homework for tonight. Oh, this one. Hmm. Where my recording thing is. Um, homework for tonight is lesson one three. It is in the back of the room on the board. It is also on your purple sheet. You're looking for lesson one three. While you're working, I'll be coming around to those of you who I didn't get grades for one two from. Because, like I said, I spent my lunch chatting. So, um, I'll come get those grades from those of you who I missed them from. And then just remember, we're gearing up for a quiz on Wednesday. Okay?